Welcome to another Moog demo library. Today we're going to talk about ring modulation in the matriarch. Ring modulation was a popular signal processing effect in the 1950s and 60s used for making sci-fi and spacey sounds as well as for synthesizing metallic tones. Ring modulation is a technique related to amplitude modulation but allows for a signal to be amplitude modulated in both the positive and negative directions. Basically, a ring modulator multiplies two signals together. The result is that a ring modulator produces some indifference tones. But without getting too math heavy, the upshot is that the ring modulator can create some wild metallic sounds. On Matriarch, you can do frequency modulation in the oscillator bank, and you can do amplitude modulation with the VCAs, but on its surface, there's nothing on the Matriarch that says ring modulator. But in fact, Matriarch has three as each of its attenuators can be used as a ring modulator. We'll start by ring modulating two triangle waves together. Because ring modulators produce some indifference tones for every frequency component of its inputs, using inputs with lots of harmonics, such as sawtooth and square waves, can pretty quickly get out of hand. So we'll use triangle waves to start. I'm going to start by tuning oscillator 2 a perfect fourth up from oscillator 1. This will give us an interesting spectrum as a result from the ring modulation. I'll start by turning up oscillator 1 in the mixer, turning up oscillator 2, and now I'll tune oscillator 2 to a perfect fourth above. That's close enough. So first I'm going to patch oscillator 1 to the input of an attenuator. With Matriarch's attenuator, we can increase the signal in the positive direction as well as increase it in the negative direction. We also have voltage control over this. This means that taking oscillator 2 and patching it to the CV input of the attenuator will move this attenuator knob up and down, resulting in a ring modulation. Let's patch oscillator 2 to that CV input, and we'll take the output of the attenuator and go into oscillator 2 input of the mixer and turn oscillator 1 down so that we just hear the ring modulated tone. With the attenuator at noon, we'll get the maximum rejection of oscillator 1, which we typically want to have a cleaner ring modulator tone. As we play our note, you'll hear that as we turn the attenuator up, we get more of oscillator 1 in there. And same when we go negative. So we can, by ear, hit a sweet spot in the middle where that tone is gone and we're just getting the ring modulated tone. You'll hear that as we switch to sawtooth waves, we get much harsher textures also when we go to square waves. We can play with the relative octave spacing of our two oscillators as well. To get a wider range of tones. We've removed oscillator 1 by adjusting our attenuator for maximum carrier rejection, but if we want to add it back in, we can just use the oscillator 1 knob in the mix to add that tonal center in if we want. That way we have that center tone and the ring modulator tone completely separate. Ring modulators can start to make really spacey tones as we make drastic changes to one of the oscillator's frequencies. The frequency knobs on Matriarch's oscillator banks are for fine tune control and don't have a hugely wide range. But we can use the pitch in input to move oscillator 2 in a much wider range. Let's patch an attenuator output to the pitch input and start to move the attenuator knob. And we'll hear the classic ring mod sound.
we can voltage control this wide ring modulator movement using the CV input on the attenuator. I'll patch the LFO into that CV input and listen to the result. That might be a bit too wide, so I can patch that through our third attenuator to rein it in a little bit. You can use Matriarch's three attenuators as ring modulators for some spaced out sounds.